Hi, how you doing out there, folks? This one uh, is going to kind of be about um, McKenna. Maybe some people. Uh, it's an Andean or Peruvian, South American flute. Okay, and the Kenna. In fact, the first flute I made was the Kenna. I found a flute making video. And the guy went through the whole process, and what he was basically was making was it was a kind of, and it's um, spelled all different ways: Q U E N A or K E N A. Um, but you can find information on it out there. Basically, it has a different kind of. It's an end blown, and it has like a little notch little ramped and sometimes you'll see a, an angle like that this is just a bird whistle sorry about bumping the mic um, I I was hesitant to make Kenneth because I had a hard time blowing them I, I had a hard time making sound this is one I got from uh, from Eric, Eric the flute maker. Very airy, and it's probably my playing, guaranteed. So it was my playing, see. Um, this is a cute little canna that I got from him. And I really studied the, the notch. And I actually watched him make this flute uh, from scratch. I watched him pick the blank, cut it, drill the holes, make the notch, the whole bit. Um, and I had made a canna before that, but it was unplayable. This is, um, I, I decided that somehow the most important thing to me was learning how to make noise with them, you know? And the fact that I could just pick up pieces of bamboo that were laying around that had the ends cut off, that were just hollow tubes, not too long, and I could turn them into something. And I didn't follow any particular scales when I was making these. And now this one has an unusual sound, but I think one of the reasons is it has an unusual shape. It's not really... Oops, it's not really round. It's kind of oblongish, especially right here at the blow end. If you can see, it's kind of like, it's kind of weird. It's eccentric, kind of like the guy who made it. But the important thing to me was getting the blowhole right. Hear that? You hear that vibrato in there? I think that's the shape of the boar. Um, here's a little, little bigger one. Um, again, using pretty much that same embouchure. Now, what I do is I get the burning iron and I put it like about that angle. I'm not one of these guys with a or compass or something else. You know, so about like that. You know, so if I held that 90, you'd see it. Yeah, I don't know. It was 45, maybe 30. And then do a little on the inside. Just a little on the inside. Sometimes touch it up with a, a little sandpaper. Now, Eric 
it says bring the flute to you and nod your head until you get it that's the advice I've used um, pretty good advice um, sometimes I'm a little wacky with the way I drill my holes just with my hands I, I want it to fit my hands Now you can see, as I move the flute up and down, you kind of hit that spot where you get the flipping of the air. Um, some people talk about splitting the air, but according to some other stuff I've read and heard, it's not the splitting, it's the flipping. The air flips in, the pressure builds inside the tube, the air flips out. The pressure is released, the air flips in, it builds up, it flips out, it's released, and that's what's really going on. Now, I, I always have trouble with the really high notes on these. I don't know. If it's just because I'm holding it different or it requires a little more breath control. The lower notes seem easier. Well, they did a second ago. And anyway, moving on. This is another one I made. And um, really weird kind of sound to it, scale-wise. play the high low notes better with these big holes um, if I put this on a tuner it's probably so way out of whack with any kind of, of um, standard but I, I love the flute and it's kind of like it plays a song just going up the scale See how I lose it there because I'm not really that practiced, but it's worth learning how to do this because um, there's some pretty cool flutes. Now this is another one I made. I wanted to make a bigger one, and I wanted to make one um, kind of in a in a normal, you know, kind of major tuning, just to see if I could. What the heck? to it it's nice and thin walled but one of the things about this particular piece of bamboo it, it's so light. it's feather light it's so dry it, it's so dry oh also I got a little tuning hole in here because um, I wanted to tune it <laughs> um, really attractive I love the, the the features of the bamboo this is just really cool natural markings. Nothing, nothing on this flute, but but mineral oil, and um, it's really cool. Um, the thing about it is, it's so dry. Like when you you go to hit this with a burning iron, it'll flame up. 
I mean, that's how dry this particular piece is. And I think it, it, it affects the sound. If you hear, if you listen closely, go sharp breath and still has that kind of sound to it so anyway that was my video on um, tennis so far hope you enjoyed it and um, this has nothing to do with it, but this is the first um, PVC regular side blown that I've made. I just decided to. It don't sound bad. So, uh, you know, if you don't feel like ruining a bunch of bamboo or wood, you know, run some PVC and, and try making your own flutes. It's really worth it, folks. Enjoy. Make some more music. The world's a better place for it.